Hey, it's John Reed, JDOD.com. I've got the usual suspects and some additional suspects, which I'm going to introduce in a sec. This is our uh, Madrid Sapphire Tech Ed co-location, day one wrap. <laughs> uh, we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of what worked and what didn't today. Talk a little bit about what to expect the rest of the week from some opinionated guests. The never knowingly under opinionated Dennis Hallett is behind our massive equipment desk. He made this live stream happen for you all. So Abesh, I hope you're <laughs> enjoying this experience <laughs> and hopefully a few others as well as the masses figure out where the real commentary lies. On my very far left, I have James Appleby who is sitting in for John Appleby, but what we like to say is it's an improved Appleby experience. <laughs> That's not what he we, says. We upgraded. <laughs> we upgraded Applebee's. How are you doing, James? Appleby two dot zero here. <laughs> How's your brother doing? He's great. He's All right. Great. John is actually not present with us uh, in Madrid, so thanks for coming. And uh, our other colleague, VJ, who's often on these shoots, is not here either. But doesn't matter because we got some excellent uh, thinkers here. We got Harold Ryder. What's going on? Doing good. Thank you very much. And Dick Hirsch, how's it going? Great, good to be here. Going to help us understand the SAP cloud today? I'm going to try. Excellent. Uh, so, so guys, let's jump right in. Uh, day one reactions. Who wants to start? Well, I can, I can start sitting right next to you. Please do. Um, well, I want to start with the, with, with the keynote and, uh, you know, give the first thing, give some condolences out to uh, Bill McDermott's right. uh, family because he had a, death in his family and couldn't be here in person. But nevertheless, you know, he joined live. I mean, he joined remotely. I, I think it was 2 a.m. in Utah. Mm -hmm. So you got to give him props for that and the commitment. On the other side, just like in Orlando, the interview style does not work for me. Doesn't right. matter which lady is the moderator or not, whether Bill would be here or not, it's the interview style that doesn't work for me. Um, then. At, at, you know, at least um, Jim Snabe was here, and he did a fantastic job, I, in, in my opinion. And uh, the message was very good, especially, you know, the history that he showed and, and how he, you know, from his point of view when he started with in his career, how it changed, and then using the music industry and several other industries on how businesses are transforming and how SAP can help those businesses and their customers. And I think that was a very powerful story. And that's why I like the keynote. Tell, so, guess one good on the row here. Yeah. I mean, what I really liked about it was once again sort of the focus on the customer, and um, the interview style was, as you said, a little bit weak. But I think that's probably just because of the keynote itself. They want to have some sort of like we're doing a conversation. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it, it does work. Um, what I really thought was curious was to see the customer on the stage speaking with um, such enthusiasm. Um, you really rarely see that, and I thought that was worthwhile. And also, um, in the second part of the keynote, I thought was interesting, the focus on the consumer. That's becoming more and more of um, sort of an, a point of attention for me. And the story, as you mentioned, regarding the music. I mean, we're seeing SAP change. Um, we're seeing it moving more towards the end, the, the end user, towards the consumer, either v via the, the customers of SAP customers or interacting with the customers themselves. And I think that's a, a very interesting aspect. Um, what was also interesting for me today was that I talked to some of the people involved in the NetWeaver cloud. Um, I didn't get to see any of the sessions, the, the, um, the discussions of the, the roadmap, but talking with these individuals, I get excited because I see that there's a lot of potential there. And um, in terms of what's coming up down the road, I think it's, um, going to be an exciting time. I, I actually quite like the interview style, so I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think it just breaks it up a little bit and brings a, a little bit of focus and attention to it. Uh, and they're both brilliant speakers and they're impassioned about it, and I like that. But to me, there was a bit of a lack of content. If I compare it to Last Sapphire, where they talked quite a lot about what SAP was doing and what their strategy was, which is kind of what I come here to get, what I was really getting here was what's happening in the world, what's happening with consumers, and much less on, and this is therefore what we're doing about it, and this is what's in our roadmap. And I would have liked a little bit more about that, a little bit more clarity on what some of the things they talked about were. Yeah, yeah but don't you think, I mean, that's, I mean, the world is changing, as you say, and maybe this attention on the consumer is the strategy, is part of the change. It, it, yeah, so, so I absolutely agree. Um, 
but that's kind of old news anyway, and it's been happening for a while. So yes, it is the strategy. So I get that, but what are they doing about it? So mm -hmm. therefore, how are they addressing that problem? And I didn't really get that. I didn't get much of roadmaps on what was happening with the product sets. You know, you know what, because you mentioned it, that just by throwing in, you know, talking about SAP 360, and actually nobody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And you put that slide out there, but they're not talking to that slide. I think they missed an opportunity there. Mm. They should have explained what it is. I started Googling it, right. and I'm like, I couldn't, can't find anything on Google either. What is it? Mm. And then you have to talk to people, SAP, and explain right. it to you. And then on Twitter, they were trying to correct that by saying, big announcement, blah, 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 go here. That wasn't an announcement, it was just mentioned casually. Yeah. Well, yeah. the other funny thing is that there was a semi-big <clears throat> announcement, which we can debate the importance of, but it was, CRM on HANA, which is, right. I think, officially embargoed for another uh, 20 minutes <laughs> or so. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, Jim Snaba ended up announcing it at the right. press conference. But during the keynote, it was sort of buried in right. in the 360 announcement. And to me, it's like, well, if, why did you embargo it? And I don't, as far as I know, nothing's happening in 20 minutes except maybe issuing a press release. So why right. didn't they take advantage of CRM on HANA and lead with that? Yeah. And, right. and call that news, because it is news, right? Oh, I it's mean, absolutely news. I mean, whether or not you think that SAP is doing the right thing in CRM, it's the first large-scale transaction system on HANA. That's worthy, right, of, I think, a keynote. It, 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 it brings HANA to, to life and crystallizes the, the, a lot of the real value of it. I think it's a huge announcement. And huge. It should have been, right? should have been really Just like good. Jim said, it's the, the three step, it's the last step. Yep. I think there are going to be more steps, actually, but it's a big announcement. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and make that makes a real difference to the business and it makes a real right. difference to the consumers. And, and you can feed that, you can re really weave that in to the story of the day. For anyone who missed the, the keynotes today, were there any other news takeaways just briefly that people should be aware of from the keynotes or anything you heard today? The CRM and HANA was obviously one of the things. Was there anything else? I, I thought, I mean, the, the Ariba story has been growing. And okay, yeah. uh, I was pleased that that came out. Again, I think there's a lot more detail in there. But that's right. quite transformational. But we as well. did have an Ariba executive on stage for the first time. Yes. So, yep. in a sense, the, the long awaited suspense around when the heck are these guys going to end yep. the quiet period and actually say, so we did get that. Yep. And I think he did a good job. He did a good job explaining it and the, the benefits to the Ariba customers having SAP and to the SAP customers having Ariba. Yep. So, it was, he used some very good examples, real life examples, right? And that always helped. You know what was really interesting, too, is in the press conference following someone asked a question about the challenge of being profitable as a cloud company and how is SAP mm. going to reach its margin goals uh, taking on so much cloud. And what what I thought was credible was the Ariba standing up and basically saying, well, we've been profitable on the cloud for right. quite some, you know, it's like before this event, SAP had no way of saying that and now they do. So that's kind of an interesting thing that maybe they can exploit and learn from organizationally. I but want to ask you guys something, with, though. I mean, oh, I wanted to do one comment about Ariba. I mean, it's interesting. If you go look where they're located at the show, they have their own little corner. And to me, this is sort of symbolic that they're not really integrated yet. Right. I mean, that's a sort of a physical representation that there's still a long way to go. Right. Um, uh, it's fairly, you know, right. It's, recent. It's, right. It's, it's, so. it's a recent, but that was for me. That was like, okay, they still aren't really integrated. They're, they have some good plans. I mean, if you read about it, they have ideas how they're going to get closer, but they're not there yet, which well, is expected. But I, but I would say that, that actually they made a staggering um, move forward in terms of actually what the integration strategy is and what the benefits are to the two customers. I, I think that's really good. Right. Well, they had to uh, announce it at some point and at least uh, providing more information now. Yeah. So guys, I want to throw out something that bothered me and just around the keynotes and see if you agree or disagree. <coughs> you know, Jim Snobby spent quite a lot of time outlining music industry and, and basically how essentially data in the form of MP3 and just completely disrupted an industry. And I don't disagree with that. I mean, that's obviously true. But what I found myself thinking was, isn't this sort of the same thing that cloud is doing to on-premise ERP? Like, to me, I was waiting for him to address in some form that issue, mm -hmm. right? Like, how can you talk about disruption without talking about the ways in which these vendors, which you don't have to name, but the work in the sales forces and the whole way in which cloud is even shifting a lot of the the enterprise discussion from an IT centric discussion to a business that's very disruptive to yeah. SAP. What it seems like you have to finish that argument somehow. But it's a, it's not just you know a one piece to the disruption, right? The way he presented it, it was you know you have right. the a product that is disruptive, then the way the product gets 
consumed, right? The, this deployment model is disruptive, and then it, it ends with you know the easy payment and everything around that. <coughs> so, but I agree that of course, cloud is disruptive, and uh, that's why SAP is buying up those. But the big part that he missed on that as well, though, is that it's completely changed the whole music industry. And they don't make their profit so much from the music anymore. They make it from all the live entertainments and the sponsorship right. opportunities and all of that. So the music industry has had to totally reinvent itself. And how kind of many? Kind of like the ERP vendors that are used like to making ERP money off 22% maintenance streams yeah. and kind of like it's that. It's also yeah. the ecosystem, right? So many in the ecosystem of the music industry disappeared. Yep. And you could say that might happen to those companies, to those partners that don't adapt to the new reality, mm -hmm. right, in the ERP in the world. Yeah, a lot of disintermediation went on. Right. What else, guys? What else did you uh, observe today? Uh, any interesting meetings? Any arguments in the hallways? Anything you want to share? Well, I just came from... Uh, it is your birthday, so there is that. Oh, yeah, wow. okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> yep. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, we went to the, the user experience area is pretty large here, right? So, and they are doing, um, they're actually doing user uh, or design thinking right here. They have two, uh, like uh, fish bowls, you might call them, aquariums where you can see inside. And then they do this design thinking with uh, customers going over at the top 20 transactions and screens that should, you know, can improve my usability. And uh, we had a mentor meeting about the whole usability area and you know personas and <coughs> will help in certain areas but also the whole strategy of how they tackle the whole usability problems because it's a big job right so that was very interesting and and so why is usability a problem well because it's as we know as it as it sub GUI is not really the okay so you're talking about the ui in particular I, Absolutely, the whole the UI. Yeah, I got this in um, some sessions yesterday at the Partner Day where uh, some people from Success Factors were part of the business mm -hmm. and they just went on and on about creating right. beautiful applications and then showed them and they are beautiful. And that's a real focus for, for the cloud. And we had right. some heated arguments, you know, we, right. with the mentors about adoption and monetization and, you know, like with Gateway, should it be free or not? Be this is not that easy. to make all the user interfaces beautiful. Okay. Uh, and developers don't do that, designers do that. I think one thing yeah. I took away, um, and, and it's just it's kind of a, a snapshot if you come, go back from a year to now, is the maturity of HANA and completely <coughs> different conversations that you're having outside of the room. So last year, people were going, well, actually, HANA, that's quite interesting. I've not really thought about it before. And this year, it's really, right, what's my use case? Where do I need to put it in? What's my first steps? How do I move yeah. it forward? Completely different conversations. Well, look at the look at the uh, partner hall, right? And look at the SIs there, the partners, and yeah. the partners right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, everywhere. I mean, I also had some interesting conversations speaking about developers with the Energem team, talking about the involvement of RIM and Microsoft in the Energem. Mm -hmm. That wasn't today, but the conversation was very interesting. Having these people who are dealing with usual. Um, with their tablet, bringing them to the event, giving the, um, the developers there the ability to really work with them and providing them tools to do this. I mean, that was for me pretty exciting. It shows that not only SAP, but also these other vendors, hardware vendors, for example, are realizing the importance of dealing with developers at a very early stage. Yeah, you know, I was at the first InnoJam day, uh, and I've been to a lot of InnoJam, so I've actually been pretty critical of the format in some ways, though. I like the idea, and I was pretty impressed with this year's. I've got a blog post in the oven about it. I don't know if it'll ever come out or not because there's a lot in the oven there. But, but the the one thing that impressed me a lot about that was that when it came time, the, in the Interjam, it used to be that SAP would take like several hours to go over all the technology that was available, mm -hmm. and it was really tedious for the people in the audience who were there to code and do stuff. This time. One of the big changes is that at the point in the show, it was actually about six hours in because they had spent a bunch of time on interesting stuff around design, which gets back to your point about usability and design being so important. And then when it came time for tech, basically everyone in the room had time to pitch why you should use their solution. They had to do it right. in front of the group. And RIM and Microsoft and, and SAP's own NetWeaver Cloud and HANA, they all had the same opportunity to pitch why 
you should work with them. Right. And, and no one had any special privileges there, not SAP, not RIM, not, you know, and I thought that's a very accurate reflection of how things really should work right. in development, right? Like there should be no real proprietary obstacles. You should be able to choose the tools you want to work with. Right. I thought that was pretty neat. And yeah, having outside vendors there really made it interesting right. and yeah. especially seeing the rim and the blackberry table the rim and the windows <laughs> tables right next to each other right. kind of really brought home what's going on you know right it's it's the reality outside of sort of the enterprise space i mean right now you have all these vendors coming in and there's a real competition for developers well we had a very big debate on twitter that afternoon around just developer ecosystems and how important they are and right. you know and 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 you know kim windows essentially build the, the kind of developer community it needs. Right. And of course, that's a big struggle for RIM and they're trying to, they're really trying to right. engage and, you know, mm -hmm. and that becomes a conversation with SAP, which is the question I posed to Snobby at the presser, which was, right. as far as I could tell from the keynotes, they were basically saying, we're gonna build all this stuff. And my right. question is, I don't think that's gonna work. Like, I, I think you right. have to make it possible for, you know, a bunch of developers and, a, and not just your approved partners to develop right. these apps and make it possible to, Right. And, and customers as well. And that becomes a really important part of the conversation that really, that wasn't part of what was discussed right. today, but I think it's really important. Well, know? especially for, for Hannah. I mean, if they start to build out the ecosystem there, they got to involve these other people. Yeah. I mean, that's otherwise, it's just, I mean, you can't just depend on the partners. You need to go for the, the broader ecosystem. And I see a lot of similarities between what Hannah has to achieve and what the NetWeaver Cloud people are trying to do as well. Both have to sort, sort of build out these ecosystems, otherwise they can have some serious problems in the market. The, the cloud stuff's really interesting. I think you're the expert in this. And I, so, I, and I'm, I still can't quite get my head around it, but from what I can see of the cloud strategy that's being yeah. presented, what I see is a, a strategy for the techies and for the developers, but I don't see a, a business strategy and a customer, an SAP customer strategy that really makes a huge amount of sense to me. And I, I, well, to me, it's more. I, I think the success factor guys would disagree with that. Right? They would always go and say, Tech. the reason why we have those cloud discussions is because the customers don't want a technology. They don't want to talk technology. Th th that's absolutely right. But I think, I think what I see is, is a, a strategy which allows the developer community to right. build a series of cloud applications, which I think is what, 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 what is needed. But then I see a series of business applications. So we've got the, the people and the money. Right. And it, it, to me, that part of the strategy is actually a market positioning of the products that they have, rather mm. than a statement of the future strategy. So where, for I example, mean, is manufacturing in it? OK, that, 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 that question would be, would that be something SAP would do or something a partner would do? I mean, because that's, I mean, I agree those are, those are gaps. And the question would be, for example, SAP says we want to do the four horsemen. Um, money, company, um, customers, suppliers, suppliers, those four, yeah. Yeah. And, and, everything <laughs> and everything else, and everything else, an employee, <coughs> and everything else is done by partners. Of course, to do that, then you have to create an um, environment that nurtures that. I mean, Dick, to be honest, I think, I, I think manufacturing was almost left out of that conception, in my personal opinion, just because manufacturing in the cloud is sort of the last, is sort of the laggard of the cloud. I don't feel like, I feel like eventually that would have to be part of the core. Well, I mean, we would actually you really let I a mean, partner like handle many. I, I have a, I don't well, know, maybe as a partner, you could, you could comment on that, but I mean, can you imagine we're getting a customer I mean, you have MII. Yeah, I mean, will handle your manufacturing for you? It's no, no, no. I, I'm not, no, that's the it's, point. It's, yeah. it's the, who has the domain expertise to build those apps, right? And that's right. Why absolutely partners can build those. They have domain right. expertise. And they're not going to operate it, right? Right. Yeah. But I mean, where do you stop? I mean, right. I mean, does does SAP do the manufacturing, the GRC? Do they just duplicate everything they have on demand, or do they say, okay, why don't we create a platform that maybe other individuals can do? Maybe they can do foundation services, and a partner could do manufacturing, but I, I or or someone else. I another. Thought, I thought Hana was the answer to all these questions. I'm curious. <laughs> It all runs on that, but I think that's really dangerous because, to, to, my, to my mind, the job of the software company is to create the software and the IP that's behind it. If they start creating a platform, then someone can build their uh, their cloud app on their platform. They can easily migrate it onto another right. platform and take their customers with them. So I think if if you're looking to build a a true full cloud strategy, then SAP need to own the core of that. Partners can build the bits around the edges, but the core's got to be got to be owned there. The question is, how do you define core? Yeah. I mean, I think that's still, I mean, the I'd, I'd argue supply chain and manufacturing is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Then. But the message that I understood from SCP in various meetings was nothing of the core ECC will ever go into the cloud, right? I mean, you, you, can, you can install it there and call it cloud, right? Mm. But it's not going to be replicated as a cloud solution. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I think you see other things like the SAP's activity in the banking, banking world. I mean, they're also active in the cloud there, and they're working with other banks to create a solution. Maybe not, it's not going to duplicate what's present on the on-premise world, but they have a solution. I mean, the, the question is, what do you expect? Do you expect a one-to-one -one copy of MII dealing with manufacturing, for example? It's just not going to work. Um, yep. I mean, I think that's where do they start and, and where do they evolve to? Yeah. And I suppose my point is that what I feel they've done is they've positioned their strategy as the products that they've got today. Mm -hmm. well, Which may be right, yeah, that may be everything. Yeah, and I, and I think this discussion is a good example of why there's so much work to do because we're all raising a ton of questions, a lot of which haven't been answered yet. And, you know, to be, to be fair, I think the SAP has a little bit of time. The message hasn't gotten clearer from yeah. like our last meeting where we said the same thing. Right. So far the message hasn't, and the content hasn't, there hasn't been much more content either, right? From TechEd or from Orlando till here? Well, Al Alriba, yes, right? So that's what they bought. But and from the in The money thing as well, I think. I mean that's the money financials on, on demand is going to be released, I think, either okay. tomorrow or on Thursday. So that's... That might be one, yeah. But, and, and James, I would argue that the developer platform thing is far from resolved or clear. I mean, partially because of all these acquisitions, partners need the ability to build and complement all these different apps, and it needs to right. be somehow unified into some kind of coherent platform view, and I don't think that's anywhere near solved myself. But I, I don't expect it to be, but I certainly don't think it is. Um, I mean, when I talk with partners who are building cloud apps, they're still in the infancy of it. And some of it is also customer embracing that, understanding license requirements. Right. There's just a lot of legwork yeah. to do. Uh, security issues, you know, there, there's all these different pieces that are getting resolved. There's a ton in, of stuff to do. So in, yeah. in, in this context, I'm actually looking forward to uh, Vishal's keynote Very on much. Thursday, because I want to see if he has how different is it from the tech at one? Or right. is it going to be, I mean, I'm sure there are going to be similarities, of course, but I do expect some changes. He did, spare, he did spend a fair amount of time on cloud as well, which was right. a little surprising for those of us that expect Vishal to, Hana, you know. Hana. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the you Hana, know. I mean, Hana, like you said, the Hana is underneath everything, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, is I there. Mean, yeah, I mean, if Hana is Vishal's daughter, then cloud is maybe the slumber party <laughs> guest or something, I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, so, so you brought up a good point, which is sort of the rest of the week. So let's shift a little bit and start mm -hmm. thinking about just framing the rest of the week. So tomorrow we have something known as the general strike, uh, which caused a bit of a ruckus in terms of logistics and scheduling. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's really no, as far as I know, there's really no major event on the schedule tomorrow, right? It, yeah. Well, I have actually, it's interesting, I have a very busy schedule tomorrow. Right, but as far as, at 8 as far as keynotes are concerned, though, no. there's really, as far as the right. public is concerned, and so there's been a lot of shifts in the schedule, and then the keynote to accommodate some of Vishal's commitments is towards the end of the day on Thursday. Right. So it'll actually kind of be the wrap of the conference in some ways, though, I guess there's a little bit of Friday morning Don't stuff, they do the Q&A before the keynote? Yeah, there's a Q and A before the keynote, which is a little unusual. Strange. We can ask him. So, what we're gonna what we're gonna hear in an yeah. hour? Yeah. What, what are you gonna say <laughs> at the keynote, right? Yeah. That's that's um, mad. But yeah. <laughs> so 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 with with that in mind and understanding, there's still an important keynote to come on Thursday. Uh, what are you guys gonna be doing this week? What what do you, what questions are you trying to answer for yourselves? Whether it's business or tech, what are you trying to figure out? Well, still, Hana. And it's it's just it's just more details around certain certain areas, BW and HANA, um, scalability. Th th these are the things that I'm uh, looking for. And is that partially because it reflects ongoing customer engagements and stuff where you need to know? That's right. You need to be a credible right. source. No, well, yes, and and you know issues that I know about, and I want to get some clarification. We have all the people here, so it's uh, very easy to talk to them. Right. Um, talking about the revisions that are coming out, talking about SP5 and those things. I mean, I'm going to be looking at trying to figure out the problems and all the, the, the controversy that arose out of Las Vegas regarding the HANA cloud. What does it mean? I'm going to be trying to get some more answers here. There were some, some a few excellent blogs 
on SCN that resulted from this, um, the, these, this un uncertainty. And I'm going to be looking at um, HANA XS, which I haven't had a lot of um, information about. If you can some de deep dives mm -hmm. into there. Tell, I think tell the viewers a little bit about XS. Well, I mean, from, from, from why under, what, what I understand of it, and this is um, just, just my basic understanding, it's, I'm hot, it's, it's HANA with an application server combined to it, which, um, correct me if, if I'm wrong, which will um, enable people to do web applications directly on the, the HANA environment rather than having um, an intermediary. Yeah. So, so that for me is very fascinating, trying to figure out how this fits into this, this new possibility, how this fits into the existing architecture that they've created this, this platform. That for me is gonna be um, rather interesting. And also I'm gonna be talking to once again more people from the NetWeaver cloud just trying to figure out what they have planned, what the, the roadmaps are there, and trying to motivate them to act um, more rapidly and also more decisively in releasing, because they have stuff that I've seen, and I'd say, get it out, get it out the door, so that um, the developers and customers can be excited, um, as I am about the platform. By the way, on Saturday, I told someone from the NetWeaver Cloud team that I was just meeting for the first time that I thought NetWeaver Cloud was more important as if he's future than HANA, and he like, he was like speechless. I don't think he'd. <laughs> eyes, eyes I don't think he'd, up. I don't think he'd ever heard that from like a, sa a sane person before. But maybe he thought I was right. crazy, actually. So maybe <laughs> that's a better way of looking at it. What about you? I think there's a couple of things for me. Uh, the first thing is I want to try and um, peel back the analytics strategy and see if that's moving forwards. Uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully, there's been some good progress on that. I haven't spied anything yet, but I'm sure it's there. I think the other bit, and, and it was mentioned in some of the partner day stuff yesterday, is the shift in the market with partners having to have a much stronger IP mm -hmm. um, component to their arsenal uh, mm. and just trying to figure out how that might look, what that might mean. Say more about that. So um, as a partner, what you don't want to be doing anymore is just sitting there and waiting for an RFP to come in and then say, yeah, yeah, we can go and implement that for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, there's, there's little value add. It's a commoditized skill. You're going to get into a bidding war on price and, and you know, that's no fun. I think. Um, the new business models will be much more around, you know, our approach is all around thought leadership, which is the first step around having some IP, but then actually having those solutions which are wrapped up that you can take out to customers mm -hmm. and deliver them. So there's RDSs in this, then we've got all the, the, the different clouds and different development tools, and, and just trying to figure out what strategy might look around that. Is it almost like Bluefin would have its own types of RDSs in a way that, you know, your own mm -hmm. sort of combinations of products and services? Yeah. Which well, would, which we have done a long time, right? And you know, yeah. you, you build, even within the ERP system, right? You build your own industry solutions on top of another solution, right? As a fast start template. So when you implement SAP for manufacturing, you are not starting from zero, yep. right? Mm -hmm. There's considerable investment that you put in your own brain, your domain expertise, and then you can go and say, you know what? This is already 60 to 80% configured, yep. right? Yeah. yeah, but but does the does the cloud in particular change that in yeah. some way? And how does it change it? What does it mean? Uh, and the RDSs have taken a you know a huge they've got a huge momentum behind them. And, and um, mm -hmm. you know where where will that lead? Just just a very good point because I talked to the NetWeaver cloud people about the the, the cloud development tools, and I said, well, it, it's hard for me to believe that. Um, certain partners will actually use that and develop there when you guys have all the access to it, mm. right? And they said, well, you know what? You can actually install that in your own as a private cloud. So we, will make, we would make this available to a Deloitte as a private cloud offering, and you can just use those tools internally, and then move, once you develop it, you move that written piece over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, seriously, I mean, if, if that was really a concern, they can always take the war and decompile it. Yeah. They're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, it but just doesn't I make sense. I tell you, there is always, th these things are sensitive, right? Where, who owns what? I mean, we know this is not clear cut at all. Yeah, but that's, I mean, in, in, in any SaaS application yes. or in any pass, the, the person who, who uses the, the pass somehow has access to the, to the, to the war files. But I mean, that's usually encrypted in such a manner that th th they're just not going to do that. Yeah, but see, if I use the development environment, the versioning control, everything, it's going to be right there. 
for everybody to see. I don't want to build a, a, a I mean, paint a very dark concern. picture here, right? That you're just gonna wait and ooh, that's not the point, right? It's it's more about the principle of are we are we could we do that or not? Yeah. Sounds like a good discussion for the bar in about five hours, guys. <laughs> do we have uh, to wait that long? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe four. Uh, you know, James, I was really struck by what you said about IP because uh, I, I, this it kind of ties into something that's really been driving me nuts, which is uh, how ecosystem folks in SAP, including sometimes SAP itself, participate on social channels without, in my opinion, doing the hard work of what I sometimes call mastery or thought leadership or creating expertise of value, figuring out who you are, what you have to offer. and I. I kind of welcome this trend in business where firms are challenged to do that instead of just hopping on onto social channels and saying, hey, you know, we're really cool. It's like, well, actually, what, what are you contributing to the community that matters? Like, how are you changing how, how customers are implementing for the better? And I think that's a worthy challenge. And it goes down to the individual level. I remember talking to someone recently and I asked him, how's our friend doing finding a new job? He's a project manager is out of work. It's like, he's struggling, frankly, and he doesn't have any content. And I was really struck by that because five or 10 years ago, that wouldn't really matter. But now the fact that you're not going to shows and offering mm -hmm. some uh, something of value, it, it hurts you. And you have I think no brand, you need and, your own and, brand. And the yeah. idea that social can make up that gap, I think is fiction, you know? So I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And I think the, uh, the other point on this is there's a danger that we try and commoditize and package things which are not commoditizable or packages. You know, some, some problems, wicked problems, don't have a single solution. You know, actually, what they need is people with the, with the brains and mm -hmm. the experience and the competence to work out a great solution given the, problem that the, the parameters of the problems that are there. Right, and changing trust between customers and partners so that it feels less like partners are selling to me and more like we're actually talking with each other honestly about trying to solve these issues. You know, I think it's a real shift. So it'll be interesting yep. to see how that plays out. I wanted to ask you briefly about mm -hmm. analytics because I feel like sometimes analytics at SAP sort of takes a back seat in terms of understanding it. And frankly, I'm not totally clear if I understand SAP's analytics strategy. Uh, I know there's a <laughs> lot of products out there. Um, and I know that when things get awkward in analytics discussions, HANA's always brought up and that seems to like mm -hmm. be the trump card is like, yeah, well, HANA can change a lot of this. But what is your take on SAP's analytics strategy? Are you gonna try to learn some stuff this week? Like, what are you trying to figure out? Well, uh, you, you said a phrase there, there are lots of products out there, and there are lots more, and, and um, some of them are quite old, and there are some quite strong competitors doing some quite good things, and I think SAP just need to beef up some of their, the, the front-end capability of the analytics piece. Now, HANA completely changes the game on the uh, back end. Allows you to do lots of different things, but you've still got to consume that information mm -hmm. in, a, in a beautiful, yeah. to use the success factors way. Uh, and I think that's where the work is needed. That's right. I mean, the, the, the customers that don't implement HANA yet because they have still to fix the problems on the business object sites first. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. you know, higher priority than getting something else implemented. Yeah, yeah it seems to me that the, the two big issues are really different because one of them is sort of that proliferation of data and clean, dirty data issue. And the other is the one you're talking about around the usability and the sort of quick results in a format I, that makes sense to me. And you know, I think it's worth contextualizing that the data warehousing industry has been around for since about 19, the early 90s, and people were having this, uh, you know, business objects in 1996 used to call it the fact gap. They said, you know, data is doubling every year. Uh, the number of decisions that people are having to take mm -hmm. is going up every year. And actually, there are fewer analysts. Now, we don't have analysts in organizations anymore, so they've disappeared. So you've got all this extra data and, uh, and um, uh, uh, less time to make it in. So that, that message has been going on there for the best part of 20 years. Mm -hmm. So that's not, that's not new. It's, right. just, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's just carrying on. Right. The tools have got a little bit better. But there's an opportunity, I think, to really massively step them up another level, and that's what needs to happen. And is there anything SAP could say to you this week that would make you feel more confident in what they're doing with analytics? What would you want to hear? I'd, I'd, I don't want to say too much because I want to get into the, I really want to understand where they're going with visual intelligence, which has okay. the potential to be quite interesting with, with Explorer and where they're positioning those tools. And I've seen... I've seen some confusing messages. I want to try and clear. So it up you're in information head. gathering mode more than pundit mode at the moment I on am this at the particular. Moment, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you can yeah. be pundit maybe next time around for Happily that. To do that yeah. So, but I, think, I mean, there's one thing. If I can make an, an analytics point here, I mean, we're talking about 
consumers in the beginning. I always bring up sports. That's my, my kick today. If you look at what SB is doing in the sports area, there's always dashboards. Well, I mean, they just let me just back up. They just had major announcements with the NBA, um, the NFL, and they're usually creating applications for consumers. And these are all statistical, or usually statistics are involved. So, I mean, they are aware of the, the problems, and with this involvement with consumers, they are enhancing their ability to create applications which have beautiful visualizations. I mean, because if a, if, a if, if a football fan enjoys looking at the um, a um, sort of an information view of his team, an end user, a business user will have the the same experience when he's looking at his KPI metrics or something. So that's important. So uh, since we're on a live shoot, I got to do this real time. I just want to check in with Dennis here behind the the set. Uh, do you have any interest in coming up and offering a an, an opinion interview? He says no. Okay, so that we'll have to wait for that. How are you feeling on time, Dennis? You want you want a little more time for us, or two more minutes? Okay, sounds good. So, how about some how about some closing thoughts? Let's start with with you. I so I've been quite impressed with what SAP. Very impressed with what SAP have done over the last couple of two three years. The the change in the pace of innovation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a completely different company, and I absolutely love it. And I just want to encourage them to carry on doing that. Um, and at the same time, keep the messages coming uh, and keep the energy going. Okay. I mean, the one thing, a uh, last sort of um, last word here for today. I mean, for me, the important thing is that they clear up their messaging. I mean, for me, there's always, especially when new ideas come out like the HANA Cloud, um, there's a little bit of chaos involved, um, and they just need time to, to to sort of think with the community, with customers really what these terms mean, what the implication is of these terms for, the, for end users, for, for customers. And um, I think this is something that we just have to, have to work on. Well, I would have said messaging as well. But then the second thing, I, I, uh, it's education for me. Mm -hmm. Because with all these new things coming out, the education program has to step up and mm -hmm. has to, you know, be able to educate all the partners and the customers about how to use all those new pieces, how to put mm -hmm. them all together in, in, a, in a way that makes sense and it's cost efficient, and that has to happen as well, right? It's not just that you, know, you have all these great products, but then help us understand what to do with these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, at the risk of this becoming a discussion again, um, I, don't, I just feel that the, the social community and the, the smaller sessions and this sort of thing is actually the, the more, mm -hmm. most important part of the education. The right. big, long classroom-based sessions, I think, uh, they don't do it for me. So. Yeah, and, and I think I would tack on to the messaging a little bit and just uh, encourage SAP to realize uh, that some honesty and communication can really win trust sometimes with customers. And I know SAP is wanting to establish leadership in a lot of areas, but it's also good to be able to say, we're not quite there yet, and here's how we're going to get there. And I think customers mm -hmm. like to hear yeah. that type of honest assessment. Anyway, it's uh, been a very good uh, first wrap. Thanks for joining us for shoot one. That took a little bit of guts because we didn't know what we were going to get, but you guys did great, so thanks for that. For our viewers out there, we are going to do uh, live streams a couple more times uh, the next couple days. Just follow Dennis Hallett's Twitter account, DA Hallett. He will put out a time because they're going to vary from day to day. But I hope you enjoy the JDOD live stream experience. We'll be back again tomorrow guys uh, enjoy the week and we'll probably yeah. see you back again in these chairs before too long thanks right. very much thanks for having thanks. me thank you thanks guys bye bye